It can't be that bad, oh, 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 it can't be that bad. Um, Melissa and I just watched Stranger Things season three. Is that the newest one? <laughs> no, it's the second, the one that came out back in like 2019 or whatever the fuck. The one we all watched during COVID. Yep, that one. Yeah. Um, so- How are you liking it? I loved it. Yeah. I loved it so much. It's so good. So she's in the other room right now watching season four without me, uh, which she would stab me for if I did that without her. But it's called what? a double standard, pal. I know. That's why we can show our nipples in public and she can't. Yeah. This and is you know, where it turns around. Yeah. But this is all the trade off for them having to sit when they pee and for when they have to I pop sit when baby. I pee. That's cool. And I've been, I've been adopting that. I sit that. when I pee. I've been adopting that. So then why did that? Why was that a mark against? No, 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 no. no. But they have to, they have to squat <laughs> they have in to. public. They, they have, have to. to sit. Well, yeah. you, we we cho- get I choose to. to. Yeah. I, I want to do this. It's an option. This is fun for me. I would. I did a bunch of times in Vegas because yeah. like. I, I, I don't know if I'd sit on a t- public toilet in Vegas. No, this was the private toilet within the hotel. I would do that. But definitely not, not a public the, toilet. I hope not the lobby bathroom. No, hell no, dude. A lobby bathroom in Vegas is just as bad as a turnstile in New Jersey. No, what I meant, but that's a great, <laughs> a great comparison. Do not, t- uh, there's no other way to turn a turnstile in Jersey. <laughs> you can't just be like, can someone do this for me? <laughs> you got to touch it, dude. Uh, I had a girlfriend named that. You got to touch it. <laughs> you got it. Oh, she was what? Uh, she was a foreign she one. She was quadriplegic. Oh, my God. I would love to see you with a quadriplegic girlfriend. You know what? Hmm. I recently applied for a job as a, a PE teacher for a bunch of kids. I would love to see that, too. I was actually, you know what? After the phone interview, I was actually kind of excited. I'm, I'm actually kind of bummed I didn't get that job. Oh, I would love to see you in very, very short shorts with like a polo. Oh, and I'd wear a fake mustache. A fake mustache and a, and a whistle. whistle. Of course. And just whistle at the most inappropriate times. <whistles> Sit down. Sit down. Coach, we're already it's sitting down. It's time for attendance. <laughs> time to stand up. I can imagine you, uh, since uh, you grew up with me and g- gave me all the fat jokes and I lost the weight, and now you can't do fat jokes. You're going to do all the fat jokes to the poor seventh graders. And then just be like, guys, this is what PE's for. And they're going to be like, body positivity. Well, yeah, your body looks fat as fuck. I'm positive about that. <laughs> it's fucked up. Do your fifth lap. <laughs> I'm just on my first. You got four more to go, pal. <laughs> Come on. Every fat kid, I'm going to call him Christian. <laughs> They'll be like, I don't even know why he calls me that. I'm Jewish. It's weird. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think um, I would be a great PE teacher, but unfortunately, I, my patience is at an all-time low. Mm. Uh, so who knows? No, I think that you would learn. Obviously, your first day, your patients, you're going to learn to love the kids. I could imagine you doing that. I will say, in high school, I took that teaching career paths class. Yeah. And um, I, I, I did find that very rewarding. I did enjoy that. I, I've always liked teaching and telling people. I always like being in a seat of authority. I don't know if that surprises <laughs> you. Love you love the power dynamic when you're and, on top. And I also, know, I also love knowing for a fact that I'm the smartest person in the room. Hmm. If I'm a PE teacher for a bunch of eight eight year olds, that's not even a question. No doubt, it's not unless, even a question. Unless there's like one young young I mean, Sheldon in there. Let's say we got a savant in there who knows a lot of stuff. Yeah, uh, that savant doesn't have thirty years of human life experience. This is true, and it's also physical education, so it doesn't really fucking matter. And you know what? That's where I'm. Come on, Sheldon, let's do push-ups, bro. Yeah, and at eighth grade, no one's like that physically developed. I don't know. I once saw Ryan. We do a hundred push-ups in the eighth grade. So well, that's because like he didn't fully grow out in the eighth grade, so like that's less mass to push up. I I don't know. Ryan Wheat's always been a. I mean, I don't know why I'm saying both of his names. He might be listening actually, but he's, yeah. he's always been a full-grown man as long as I've known him. <laughs> he was one of the first people to grow a beard. Yeah, yeah. Dude, speaking of which, I had like a lot of like uh, my Facial five o'clock hair. shadow when I did that five day trip for Alan Boo's birthday. You just forgot your razor or what? I was just too lazy and I was like, you know, this kind of fits the club, the club scene. And then I shaved it off and I get praised for like my skin all the time, but I drank so hard you do have really good that skin. I got three pimples. Really? Because yeah. I, I was just gonna about to make a comment on how. How good your skin is right now, actually. <laughs> You're wearing sunglasses, and I'm kind of I'm like in a, in a distance, and there's bright lights and whatnot. But well, it, the bright lights and the sunglasses should cancel each other out. Also, I'm hiding behind this microphone. So You're that four you feet away it. from me, and the microphone's only two inches in diameter. <laughs> this is true. But I think the biggest one, other than the three pimples, yeah, was the I herpes had, on your dick? No, but that's because you, no, you can't get rid of that, bro. No, 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 that no, shit's that's, for life. That's stuck. <laughs> that shit's for life. Mm-hmm. Uh, Melissa doesn't know about it yet. But, She's got it now already. <laughs> well, what the most, the why I'm covering my 
mouth with the microphone right now is because I think I have a black head on my lip and it's never it's never happened before. I I mean I'm looking right at your lips. And you don't see it? No. It's dark skin, that's why you can't see yeah, it. Yeah. I, and I kinda like pushed it out right yeah. before the recording this. Yeah, I had this pimple like two weeks ago and because I'm white it shows up for a long time. Oh, how long does it take for your pimples to go away? Honestly, it, it I, I, this is fucking gross. I don't even know why I'm saying this. <coughs> <coughs> As you cough into the <laughs> fucking, you cough like a kid, dude. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't like popping pimples because they cause scars, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, but then also, I find if I don't pop them, they go away naturally faster. Yep. But then I got this shitty, disgusting thing on my face that's winking at women and spitting at men and. You know, telling me bad thoughts, so I have to pop my pimples. That's fucking. You have to wait until it becomes white. I do, and yeah. and but, and normally I would let it go run its course. Yep, but this one's but just I have a, a really big one now who likes to pop things. She, she pops your pimples every once in a while, but but she doesn't like looking at them either. Does she do this thing like where she like um <laughs> dates other men? No, she doesn't. <laughs> yeah, man, that'd be crazy. Good, good. It would be crazy. Good. <laughs> Um, <laughs> more people in the bedroom. You might have more editing than we think. <laughs> but no, does she do this thing? Like, do you guys ask each other to scratch each other's backs uh, when it gets itchy? No, no, you guys don't do that. No, and I've stopped asking Karen for massages too because she's so fucking bad at them. Like she goes too hard or not hard she enough. Go- it's one or the other. It's never the it's, right it's, pocket. It's, it's either she's like trying to snap my spine. Oh. Uh, or she's rubbing in air lotion. <laughs> just not even touching you? So I just don't ask anymore. She's just blowing on your do spine. Do it myself. Give me, a, <laughs> give me the fucking tennis ball. I'll do it myself. <laughs> I asked Melissa to like walk on my back, and she's so light that it does nothing. If I, anything, it's more, it's doing more for the bottom of her feet yeah. than it is. My dad used to have my, me walk on his back when I was a kid. Really? Yeah. How old were you? I mean, up until I was in middle school. When I was in elementary school, um, we had a parent-teacher conference, and we were talking to my third-grade teacher. And she was I, like, "Man, Christian can have a mouth, huh?" And your dad's <laughs> like, "Yeah, he does." <laughs> Just talking shit about me. <laughs> no, it was quite uh, the opposite. My, uh, I, you know, at that age, you don't have a filter, and you just say random shit. And I was so excited to like show off like my parents to the school I loved sure. my parents. And uh, I would say random things. And while I was t- while he was talking to my third grade teacher, I said, "My dad makes me massage his feet and gives me five dollars." <laughs> <laughs> and imagine my dad how he responds to that. Because <laughs> was this before or after he gave up beating you? <laughs> but the bruises don't show up. <laughs> um, at that point, like that's too ridiculous of a thing that you no kid could just make that up. That's like very specific. It's almost to the point where, like, uh, if a kid did make that up, th- that's actually a bigger problem. Yeah, like I need to go see. I need help. Uh, that doesn't. I th- and I'm. I'm. I may have told this story before, or maybe not. But uh, I did like a ten year study that mm-hmm. Kaiser put on uh, from this from when I was in the eighth grade till when I graduated high school. I've never heard of this. You've never heard this? No. And there was like three different interviews that I did, separated like maybe five years apart each. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, it was questions like, you know, like, uh, have you ever smoked cigarettes before? Have you ever smoked weed before? Have you ever drank alcohol? Have you ever had sex? You know, do your friends have sex? Do, like, you know, they're trying to get a, a, a finger on the pulse of children. Mm-hmm. And the first time I did it was, I, I want to say, like the eighth grade. And uh, the whole point of the study was, you know, parents and kids. And, you know, where kids go and, like, it, it was everything. So my mom was also part of the study. And the first interview, uh, and they paid us, too. They paid us, uh, wow. like, 100 bucks the first time. And then they would send me, like, a $50 gift card, a Visa gift card, whatever the other two times I did it, too. Um, but the uh, but I, I, I do remember them asking me questions of being like, uh, have you ever seen your parents drink? And I remember being like, yeah, yeah, I've seen my parents drink. And they'd be like, have you ever seen your parents drink? In front of you. And Whoa. I was like, yeah, yeah, I've seen my parents drink. I was like, have your parents ever had you pour them a drink? And at the time, I was like, yeah, all the time. I'm like, oh, okay. Have your parents ever asked you to mix a cocktail for them? I go, oh, yeah, yeah. My dad taught me how to make Tom Collins and Long Island. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, we know how to make half and halves. And oh, okay. One okay. more time, how old were you here? This is like the eighth grade. 
okay, okay. And they're like, um, you know, do your parents smoke? I'm like, oh, my, my mom does sometimes. I, you know, not my dad smokes cigars. Oh, do they smoke in front of you? No. Do, have they ever offered you to smoke? No. You know, all that kind of stuff. And I remember on the drive home, my mo- me and my mom are driving like, oh, that was a really interesting experience. And then like, you know, there was kind of a lull in the conversation. And my mom goes, uh, hey, did they ask you if you pour drinks for me and your dad? I go, yeah, yeah, they did. She goes, what'd you say? I said, yeah, yeah, I pour drinks for you guys. She goes, did they give you a weird look? And I go, yeah, they did give me a weird look. She goes, the person gave me a weird look too about it. And I was like, yeah, that was, I, I mean, I guess. I, I mean, I, I, I was don't this for I, child endangerment. Did you guys interview for child it was endangerment? CPS, it was child protective services. <laughs> but, um, but no, I mean, that was like an eye opening moment for us when we, when as like a family, we yeah. realized, um, you know, it's, it's different. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I, I, I can't imagine you in the eighth grade making your dad a Tom Collins. No, uh, not at all. I, I imagine that like that event was so stressful that on the way home, your mom just gets out the car. She's like, Boy, I'm gonna smoke in front of you. I need a drink. <laughs> okay, go make me, go make me a fucking old I mean, fashioned. I wouldn't be surprised if, as soon as we got home, she did have a drink and a smoke. Uh huh. You know? After that kind of stress, <laughs> after having like some subtle side eye about like mm-hmm. you being a bad parent without them saying it, like just based on the questions. It sounds like you guys passed with the skin of your teeth by the skin of your teeth. There was no pass or fail, by the way, pal. <laughs> okay, that's what it seemed. If we're, but it felt it feels like when you go to the eye doctor yeah. and you answer wrong. I always lie, dude, and which is why my glasses glasses are are fucked, because I'm embarrassed, because... I don't care how upset they get, because I feel like sometimes they put a bullshit one up there. Yeah, they're just like one or two. And one one stays the same. Yep. One is also three, and it's also five, it's also seven, so it doesn't matter how many options they give you, it's all the same. It's just really trying to test our honesty. I think that's what an optometrist does. (laughs) Liar. (laughs) Piece of shit. (laughs) Everyone with glasses is a liar. (laughs) Yeah. And all the people without, no, all the people without glasses or like better grade glasses, they're liars. And the worse your glasses are. The worse your glasses are. Because it fucks you up in the long run. It does, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't got a new prescription in like four years. Like, it's, it's getting pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, my my uh, my girlfriend's mom's an optometrist, so you oh, she really see her. Yeah. Oh, shit. If my insurance covers it, I would love to. I'm pretty sure it would. Most insurances are accepted by her. Which one does she work at? In Actually, Na- we should put that. Napa. Them. Okay, Napa. All the way in Napa. All the way in Napa. <laughs> I'm acting like it's super far. We live in Stockton. I just hate um, driving them. I do hate see. driving, but I hate the Ray Charles glasses that they give you after like an eye appointment, and they put like the. That's eye only. In there. That's only if they dilate your eyes, bro. They do that every time to me. Oh, you might get your doctor might be fucking with you, bro. <laughs> this kid's lying. <laughs> your doctor might be fucking with you. Hydrochloric acid in it's your like eyes. The Seinfeld episode when the dentist is molesting people when they go to sleep. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I don't. I mean, I get my eyes. I mean, I, I, I have no health insurance. I haven't had good health insurance for the last uh, since Obamacare started. I'll give you my glasses, and you can just go in as me. My eyes are fucked up, and in fact, I didn't realize how fucked up they were until I went to go see Karen's mom for the first time, and she was like, "Oh yeah, your eyes are pretty." bad you're legally blind i'm um, not that bad but mm. i'm pretty blind like uh are you nearsighted or farsighted i'm that beautiful combination of both mid-sighted it's okay. called an astigmatism oh that yeah. that's fancier um when did you start wearing glasses kindergarten oh were you standing were you like sitting in front of the tv too close i i have no idea i mean i i don't recall a time of being like I can't like I can't see things are fuzzy and I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I do remember as a kid being a pediatrician and like going to the pediatrics and like doing an eye test every year. Mm-hmm. And then one day, after the eye test, they I, they gave me glasses. Like I, I really don't even know. I don't. Were you excited to wear glasses? Were no, you like, Ooh, this I is hated an accessory? them. Really, I hated them. I didn't want to wear glasses. Nobody in kindergarten wore glasses. And 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 when I first started wearing glasses, it was like, uh, only wear them when you're sitting at your desk. Take them off when you go outside. And like, don't wear them when you're like, it was like really weird things. And and my parents knew I wasn't good enough of, of like time management to do that. Mm-hmm. So, so you just kept it on the entire all time. The time. And you had the transitional ones. Not that. Well, tra- when I first got glasses, transitions weren't a thing. Oh, or, oh. or if they were, they weren't, they weren't offered at Costco. No, I don't think you they should offer them at Costco. Not until way later. And I, I th- got mine in like maybe the third or fourth grade or something I was going like to say, I think that's when I got my first pair of transitions. And I like <sighs> everyone was wearing wireframe glasses and my head was so big that the, the they frames- They gave you goggles? 
They had the wraparounds. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was one of those. I mean, have you seen those like little kids the with like the safety glasses? Yeah. And then they have like they're cross-eyed. And I'm like, are you sure these glasses are helping you out? Because that kid. It, it, it's going to solve it. Actually, just so you know, for your own information, it's going to solve their cross-eyes. I have no. I don't think so, dude. Yes. Is that what that's for? Yeah. They have glasses for cross-eyedness? If you're a baby, yeah, you can fix it. <laughs> that far ahead of time because you're yeah you're still developing it's, it's like if you have a kid with a lazy eye yeah they'll put a patch over the good eye so that the lazy eye has to work a little bit stronger uh-huh. my um my coworker danby who you know uh pointed out that there's someone at work that has a lazy eye and he could no longer see it and i'm afraid that if i look too deep and i look into that person's lazy eye that i will start i start to see it also i will start to see it and is I, this lazy eye like the arrow in the FedEx logo where like once you see it, you can't unsee it? Well, it's like one of those lazy eyes where like you look at the person and the other one just slightly keeps moving. <laughs> oh, she's an iguana. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I mean, if I like which eye do you look at? Have you tried just smacking her in the head real hard? <laughs> like a she's, magic eight ball? Give her one good hit to set it straight. <laughs> no, dude. I I want to keep my job. Well, because I had an uncle that was kicked in the head by a horse, and he was stupid. And then he got kicked in the head by a different horse, and then he was a genius. Yo, have you heard about, like, these cases called... <laughs> I forget what it's called, but, like, it's these cases where people horse get, like, a migraine, and they or they fucking hit their head, and they wake up with a different accent. Like, there's this British lady, and she had a migraine one day, and she went to sleep, and when she woke up... Her migraine was gone, but she had a full-fledged Chinese accent. And there's interviews of it. <clears throat> that that maybe, but that sounds to me like those amnesia cases when people like hit their head and like have a whole different life uh, and then and then they remember that they had another life and then you find out later that actually they were just like running away from bankruptcy or like yep. cheating on their wife or something like it just it ends up actually like cases of amnesia like that actually don't exist at all. So that that? But it sounds like with that, there's a benefit to acting like you have amnesia. Yeah, there's a benefit to having a fake accent. You get to go on TV and shit. For how long? Like, Who gives did, a shit? does she People still want... have the accent to this day? I mean, if she wants to keep the act going. Imagine just committing to this bit, and it is so like. Uh... Uh... I, and don't put it past British people to pretend to be Chinese. It is so offensive. Uh, suddenly, fat pretended to be Chinese for thirty years. He was a, a magician uh-huh. who was like a world-renowned old Chinaman who did magic. He could make a fishbowl appear out of nowhere. Uh-huh. Uh, and he was famous for doing the catch a bullet in your mouth trick. Uh, and then one day somebody shot him in the mouth with a real bullet. And he said in perfect English with a British accent, oh dear, something horrible has happened. And everybody found out that he wasn't actually an old Chinese man. He was an English guy pretending. What's the benefit to be pretending? It's the act. He got more sales and was a more well-known magician as Sun Li Fat. So what you're telling me is that this woman that woke up with a Chinese accent, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. She wants to be a magician. She wants to be a fucking hack. That's what she wants to be. I need to show you this interview. I, I, no, you don't have to. I believe it. I believe she doesn't speak a lick of Cantonese or Mandarin. She has, and it's like as offensive as like the end of a Christmas story. So is it is it in an offensive language or is it an offensive accent or is it like oh no she grew up speaking Mandarin that's why her R's her L sound like R's. You know it wouldn't. I don't know. I didn't look too deep into it. But because it's because she's a fucking liar. I dude. think she's a liar because of it's, course she is. It's one of those accents where like maybe it would pass if you were to close your eyes and be like, "That's a Chinese person." That's like if a Chinese you've never accent. met a Chinese person from China. Have I? Like no. If you. If oh yes. The person had never met a Chinese person. Yes, but when I close my eyes, it sounds like a British woman doing a Chinese accent. I mean, I've heard British women do Chinese accents. <laughs> you, where, where do you I mean, meet people? I, I dated a British woman, so. Oh, she did a Chinese I've been, accent. I've been around, not her, not her <laughs> specifically. I don't think she's okay. listening, but I'm not saying that you, you you do that. We've all done it before, yeah. Oh, I do it every time I take Excedrin. Um, <laughs> you should really look into what you're actually taking. No, it, it's because I put them in my teeth and I go, "Look, I'm Chinese." <laughs> It's okay. It's in your twenty-three and me. You better believe it. In <laughs> fact, my dad's father is mostly Chinese. Oh, there you go. Dutch, Indonesian, and part Chinese. And Mexican. And Mexican. And uh, Swahili. Got a little bit of Siberian husky. Yeah. Oh, you got a little bit of dog. A little in chow me. chow. Yo, there's a fox that stops by my backyard every now and then. You sure it's not a coyote? No, it's legit a fox. It's legit a fox. It's it's like small and it's by itself and it just curls up in those planters we have Aww. in the backyard. And uh, I've been putting out ground turkey out there. I know you're not supposed to domesticate wild well, animals. Well, first of all, you're not domesticating it. 
Who knows? No, no, you're not. Yeah. No. You no, don't no, know. no, 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 no. You're not. You're Let's making, break it down. Yeah, I will right now. You're making a wild animal dependent on domesticated food, which he's not going to get in the wild. Mm. So as soon as you stop feeding him, where's he going to get all this ground turkey from? From another backyard. No. <laughs> it's not. You're basing your goodwill on someone else's goodwill. Dude. Well, like, if it's in this community. Shoot it. No, man. I don't think. I think it knows. I know you got a Glock in this house. I think it knows that it has it good in this really nice community. I mean, until it starts eating someone's cats or until it eats one of those fucking pugs. Yeah, then, it's not going to eat the bug. It's going to get along with the bug. Both canines. Coyotes, I think, are actually a weird mix of a fox and a wolf. Oh, damn, they could all make babies? Make right, coyotes babies? can fuck anything. I don't. And I've seen I, them do it. And that's why you're part coyote. That's why I'm part coyote. There's a lineage. They back. do bite when they fuck, though. Uh, I mean, so do humans, man. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> right? Am so, I wrong? That's I why I fit in right <laughs> well with them. Yeah. Um, no, well, I read that foxes are can imprint on up to one or two humans, both me and Melissa, and then it just says fuck off to all other humans, and I'm trying to be one of those humans. I just want to make sure you read this on Fox News. (laughs) Did you see this on on the Fox channel? Not not Fox News, but the news about foxes. No, (laughs) news on Fox. News on Fox. Not Fox News. Not Fox News, dude. I don't listen to that (laughs) bullshit. But... That propaganda? But news on Fox is weirdly right-wing, though. (laughs) You have said that to me in the past. They do love Trump. (laughs) Not Um, related, but they do. It's a weird... Completely irrelevant. (laughs) But... It's the red hat. That's how you saw him. That's what it was. It's the red hat, which is oddly stylish. And (laughs) There's this bit that Andrew Schultz has. He says, I don't know what's going on with Biden, but this is how we know he's not the best. He ain't got good merch. Oh, yes, yes. He does not have good merch. Yeah. I uh, I just saw Cat Williams' bit on Joe Biden, mm. and he's like, uh, he's like everyone's always complaining about Joe Biden. It's like, man, he is 96 years old. You leave that man alone. He's doing the hardest he can. He's 97 years old, and he's being president. You make fun of him for all. He's 98 years old, and you're making fun of him for all. He's 99-year-old Joe Biden is our president. Dude is old, man. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I, this isn't a political show or anything, but uh, he did run for president five times and lose. Here's what we should do. For the next presidential election, we should just put him... No, we should ride in Harambe, bro. <laughs> ride in Harambe? Yeah. The gorilla. Rest in peace, man. Um, Is it too late to make that joke? Is that meme like far gone? It's about gone? a decade old, right? <laughs> I think we're getting to it. That's okay. We'll just keep. We'll just keep doing it anyway. Hell yeah, bro. What would you do if you like fell into a into like a gorilla? Uh, well, first I would uh, um, teach them that I'm the alpha, mm. and then that would become my pack, and then I get to fuck all the females. You are a coyote. <laughs> You're fucking anything. No, dude. bro. If I fall in a fucking gorilla thing, I'm done. <laughs> this is what I do. What am I going to do? Try and play cards with them? Show them a magic trick? The fuck would, am I going to do? I would draw a triangle and ask if they knew what it was. <gasps> no, we're both assholes. <laughs> why no. are we an asshole? This what? is what we do. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. We're, we're both fucking idiots. So what you do? You fall into any kind of primate enclosure. Uh-huh. Watch. What are you offering? What are you doing? Well, uh, according to Planet of the Apes, uh, when you do that, what does it mean? Do it, do it, and then and then the alpha will go, and that means they accept you. And if they don't accept you, they uh, take rip you, you apart. They take you by the wrist. Well, look at that chimpanzee <laughs> that ripped that woman's face off. I believe. You remember it. that? Mm-hmm. Well, there was a that sucks. I mean, you know what? They, you can have a chimp as a pet. Mm. Uh, but eventually, it's going to turn on you. It's just, just like turkeys. Eventually, it will just have enough of playing by your rules, and it will lash out. And then you have to also remember, chimps are incredibly strong. Also, chimps are not yeah. um, monkeys. Chimps are different. Completely different. Uh, they're also not apes. Um, but uh, they'll rip your fucking face off. And I they go for it. the fatty, fleshy parts. So your oh, lips, your genitals, your ears. Dude. Anything they can get a hold of, too. They'll rip that right off. I'm not trying to domesticate a fox. Or I'm not trying to domesticate, oh, no, you are trying to domesticate, uh, domesticate a, fox. a fox. I'm not trying to domesticate a, a, a chimp yeah. or a gorilla. I'm just saying, how would I survive if I were to fall into like one of their habitats? Bro, if you're on the fall down, you should give up. What if I just go <laughs> to the fetal position? It'll still rip you up, dude. What if you I show my soft white underbelly? I'm pretty sure gorillas are vegetarians, so they only kill for fun. So do sea otters, dude. Well, Ain't that crazy? Yeah. Have you seen those videos of like otters like reaching out through their enclosures and like they just like they just want to touch your fingers? But like that's why they're still behind the enclosure because they would probably do more if they could. Yeah. Or escape. Or escape. Yeah. 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 They could do that. 
Um, <clears throat> recently, I was telling somebody about my experience feeding an octopus. That was fun. You fed an octopus? Yeah, in Seattle. You put your foot hand in there with the fish. And, and then? They fucking wrap up and... I think one of my biggest fears is to be in the deep, deep, deep blue sea. And just get eaten by an octopus, or just get fucked up by one. Have you seen those videos of like huge octopuses? Yeah, or squids. I think tend to get bigger. Oh God! Um, yeah, and they're smart. I mean, the the open sea is a terrifying place. Yeah, dude. It's like, uh, would you would you rather? Let's play this game. One of I your shoot myself games. in the face. <laughs> Shit yourself in the face. <laughs> shoot myself. <laughs> Can you imagine shitting yourself in the face? <laughs> No, that's, that's that's taking the, your poop and putting it in there. That's no, that's the cutout scene from Titanic. <laughs> Delete it. All right, I'm sorry, Leo. We're gonna have to. <laughs> I rubbed all this real shit on my face though. Oh, because he's a method actor. That's right. He doesn't want none of that fake stuff up in there. Mm-mm. No. Okay. Die. Would you rather die like open water style? Just get stuck in the middle of of the ocean am until I, a shark eats am you? Am I freezing and drowning like the Titanic, or am I getting eaten by sharks at the USS Indianapolis? Open water style. Let's say sharks. So the USS Indianapolis. Yes. Or Titanic style. <laughs> freeze to death. Freeze to death. I'd rather freeze to death. Because eventually it'll just stop. It'll be numb, you'll stop hurting, and your heart will stop. As opposed to like a shark will just rip you apart. Well, there are survivors of the USS Indianapolis. I th- in fact, I think, I think there might only be one left. And I know him. How do you, how do you know him? I've met him. And uh, he lives in Benicia. Um, but the story is, and uh, you remember Jaws? You've seen the movie Jaws. Yeah. Captain Quint, the main, the rugged guy. What about him? His character was supposedly on the USS Indianapolis. Whoa. And that's why he knows about sharks. Because when the ship sank, all the survivors were there floating and a bunch of them got eaten by sharks. <sighs> uh, but some of the survivors said at one point, um, cause they were stranded for days. Uh, oh, I'm sure. The sharks were fucking with them. Just. Like they would come up and touch their feet and then go back down, oh, touch their feet and shit. go back down. What, are, said, smarts, are, are sharks that smart that they... Yeah. And they actually don't enjoy eating people. Humans are not their choice food. I, I hear we don't taste good to sharks, but I've never met one in then person. Why would they want to eat us? Like if they can't find food. anything else? Because it's food. They're not above not eating. They just okay. they wouldn't, they wouldn't pick us. But if they saw us as opposed to dolphins, they'd go for the dolphin, right? Who's bleeding? Who's an easier prey? Uh, that's uh, that's where I think their brain goes to. I guess so. And, I guess and so. the survivors will tell you, you know, after after a couple of hours of them fucking with you, eventually you just say, "Fuck it, dude. Fuck. Eat, please eat me. Take me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm done. Well, what's the move to do? Like to like, how do you how do you savor your energy? Uh, like when you're just in open water, because there's so long. There's only so long that I could like uh, float in water. Like, do I just do I rest by like? Causing my body to float by going on my back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I can't even do that. You, you got to find a way to float for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I know the men on the uh, Indianapolis. Some of them had life preservers, mm-hmm. but those were only designed to keep you afloat for twelve hours. Mm. Uh, some of them had buoys and life rafts and stuff, but yeah. those were meant for five to seven men. They had fifteen men on them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. It, it, it's tough, and, and the fact that they got found is just fucking sheer luck. Uh, an airplane a was miracle. Uh, an airplane was just on a route and thought he saw coconuts in the water. <laughs> Let me go get these coconuts. Seriously, thought he saw coconuts in the water, uh, and then so he circled to go back, and then he realized the coconuts were waving. Wow, uh, good luck. And then he thought they were Japanese soldiers, so he had armed his uh, armed his guns and was going to go down for a strafing run. Uh, and then as he got down closer, he realized these maybe aren't Japanese people. Wow. Whoa. I didn't realize that. Yeah, and so that offers the question of how often do ships sink and the men survive, and we have no idea. I'm. They're just there. It happens. It has to happen. Like a like a storm just sweeping the ship. I mean, I mean, even with all of the best technology, we still have planes that disappear, and we have no idea what the fuck yes. happened to them. And shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's scary. You know, um, they're doing space diving now. Like yeah, I saw that guy do that shit. Yeah. Would, would you ever? I mean, he surpassed the speed of sound. I think that's how fast his body had accelerated, you know? I know when Felix Bumgarner did that thing for Red Bull, mm-hmm. and the guy who you're talking about beat his record. Yeah. Um, that's crazy, dude. 9.8 meters per second squared for however many meters from, the, from space down to uh, the surface Earth. of the Earth. That's insane to me. Like, I would nev- never do that. There's no... 
There's no high tech parachute that could ever convince me to ever do that. However, I think I would. I'm getting. I would like to do normal skydiving first. Yeah, I'm let down me, for that. Let me do like a 2,000 foot drop first. Imagine like nothing else after space diving. If you successfully survive that, nothing else moon diving, could bro. give you joy. Moon diving. It's going from the. <laughs> there, you can't jump from the moon. Fucking Tom Hanks did it in Forrest Gump, or was it Philadelphia? I don't remember. One of those movies he was on the moon. Not Forrest Gump. Maybe Forrest Gump, the second book. Actually, in the first book, he does go to the moon. Oh, he. Oh, he, in he the is book. an astronaut. Yeah, that's uh, where he gets his pet monkey. Mm. And that's why when he meets Lieutenant Dan at the wedding, and he points at his legs, he goes, "It's the same metal that they make the <gasps> spacecraft out of." He says, uh, "Uh, what does he call it?" He says, "Wow, wow, space, space legs, or whatever he calls it." It's really funny. He's like, you got new legs. And he's like, that's right. And he hits them and he goes, uh, same metal that they use for the spacecraft. Wow. You wow. got new, new legs. New legs. <laughs> I just threw that on the other day. I, it blew my mind that it's, it's Robin Wright. Oh. No, it doesn't blow my mind that it's that long. So much happens. But that it's Robin Wright that plays uh, Jenna. I didn't realize. Yeah, the same woman from Princess Bride, the same woman from House of Cards. Here's a fun game. What did <clears throat> Jenny die from? HIV, right? Um, a sec, an, an, S, an STD, right? She died from hepatitis. Hepatitis. And they chose that because they didn't want it to be necessarily a sexually transmitted disease. She maybe got it from the needles. Mm. When she was doing all them drugs, dude. Because they never say. No, they, they never they say make a point gum. to not say if what what the disease is, but it it is. They left it ambiguous. Hepatitis. Did you see that? Um, Tom Hanks got nominated. I don't know if he won for like two Razzies. Yeah. Uh, for like worst actor and like worst film. It sucks, dude. Well, his character in that Elvis film was not needed. And also. <laughs> the snowman. Yeah. Colonel whatever. Yeah. Um, that whole movie could have not had Tom Hanks and it would have been just fine. But he was the main antagonist. I think Elvis was his own main antagonist. Yeah, but like he was, he was the catalyst for I, like they couldn't blame Elvis in a movie about Elvis, mm. so they had to blame. It. I I think the Colonel was a horrible man, believe me. Um, but I don't know. I don't think Tommy. Uh, and then uh, between that costume and his Geppetto costume, so that's the other the one I was getting made fun of. The Geppetto yeah. one. You would think like in theory he'd make a great Geppetto. I didn't watch it. Did Nobody you? did. It was all it was on Disney Plus, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but again, that movie's not made for us. That movie's made for kids. And in yeah. fact, the generation of kids that are still being born right now. So they'll eat up anything, dude. Yeah. Like, um, what was the last live action Disney Plus movie I tried watching? Fox uh, uh, not Fox and the Lady and the Tramp. Lady and the Tramp. Horrible. Absolutely horrid. I mean, I, I fast forwarded to the spaghetti scene. Was it worth it? Is that the only good scene? Does it still have that scene? It does. Okay. Uh yeah. live action Mulan? How'd it go? I didn't see it. Live action Lion King, how'd it go? Didn't see it. Live action Aladdin, watched it. I did too. Actually enjoyed it. I thought Will Smith could mm -hmm. slap more people. That would have made the movie better <laughs> if he just went down the line slapping people. More Chris Rocks. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I like Will Smith as Genie. I like him. Yeah. I, he's not Robin Williams as Genie. No, definitely not. I'm like I. But I also like that Will Smith wasn't trying to be. He tried to do his own thing. He tried he to rap. The, um, he was the Fresh Prince of Bel Air Genie. Mm -hmm. Because he basically did like a 90s rap version of uh, You Ain't Never Had a Friend, yeah. Never Had a Friend. Yeah. For sure, for sure. He did that, so that was cool. It was weird seeing Will Smith blue. Like, it was weird to see like a live Would it have been better blue. if he was white? <laughs> no, it wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, never mind. It's, have you seen? He's fine the way he is. <laughs> you, you've seen this influx in like AI generated <laughs> art, right? Yes. It's all over the place. Yeah. I just saw a thing where they put actor an actress in, and I can't. I can't remember who it was. But they did it wrong? It was no. Uh, she's a black actress. And they like, what she would look like if she was white, mm -hmm. if she was Asian, if she was Mexican. Like, you know, the AI made it. So it looked... And it was really interesting because like, you know, you see similarities in people. doesn't matter what race or yeah. culture they are, right? But to have somebody that you know, this is what, you know, Lil' Kim looks like. Yeah. Well, have you seen... You've seen our friends posting it. Yeah, like which one in particular? What do you mean? No, no, no. I'm just saying in general, right? Oh, yeah. Like this is me if I was a space podcaster. So on I the know moon. it's like controversial in the fact that like the, the AI is stealing from like the original art ideas from artists. But <clears throat> before uh, I thought about that or knew it, I was peer pressured into doing it and I did it. So I already had it. And from those, there's some ones that are like really spot on. Yeah. And there are others where I look like. Where I look like Jimmy O. Yang. You mean almost like real art? 
<laughs> how, like yes. sometimes real art's really good and sometimes it's dog shit. Yeah. Almost like maybe these computers are doing exactly what artists are doing. Mm-hmm. And almost like artists are offended that they're not getting the work, but it's also like you weren't going to do that commission work anyways. <laughs> so why not have an app do it for free so we can all have fun? This is why it's controversial. I don't know. I didn't think about it's, it that hard. It's not that. I mean, I, any artist who's upset that AI is taking <laughs> away their jobs, I, I would like them to talk to somebody who doesn't do any art on the iP- on the iPad or any of that. But what shit, if, you know like, what specifically I mean? those AI generated generated art pieces are almost exactly like the style that they did? Not necessarily that the AI is creating its own art, but like, what if it's just like, no, this looks exactly like so and so's art? Is it a little different? I don't know. I have to do. I have to do research. I don't really have too much of a well, because, solid opinion, but because and even if you don't, but because if it's not, then that's copyright infringement. Yeah, yeah. that law is already illegal. That that's already an illegal thing to do. Oh, and I guess it hasn't been like shut down quite yet. I mean, no. And because it's not that hard to make something not copyright infringement. That is true. That that's very, <laughs> that's very true. You know um, what I mean? Yep. So, I yeah, I just parody find, law. I maybe. just find it silly. I mean, look, it's not like artists artists have a hard job. Period. Yeah. Okay. AI doing these shitty little paintings aren't taking any work away from an artist, mm-hmm. right? And because people will still get the real thing. Yeah. Hopefully, will still like not just rely on AI generated and, art. And even if they don't, let's say they pay. A thousand dollars for an AI generated painting mm-hmm. that's 3D printed and shipped to your house in 24 hours. Uh, that's why they're paying for it mm-hmm. because it's fast. And you don't have to wait for the. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, so it's the same get, argument as like cooks don't get mad at McDonald's because their burgers are done in 10 seconds. Boom. Yeah, that's right. Or I mean, like, some are, but they're assholes. I mean, like now, yeah, it's the same argument of like with like key automated kiosks. Is that taking the job away from like? People that could work at McDonald's, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, that's that's the argument. But then people are always like, "Well, why are people at McDonald's so stupid?" It's like, "Well, then get the fucking go to the kiosk, then, bro. You can't have it both ways. You don't get to tell people behind the counter are stupid and then hate on the kiosk, I just, or you just don't go to McDonald's." I just think customers in in general, I think, are just always wrong. Dumb. Yes. Dumb. And it's and it's the customers who are complaining about the AI thing because I think people have to work in the service industry at least once in their life to understand how to communicate and how to understand how the other person behind the counter yeah. is feeling and why they're doing what they do. Yeah, six months in a restaurant or six months in jail. Well, fucking... T- Either or, yep. you get to pick. Yep, whatever, you choose your, pick your poison, dude. Yeah. It's, uh, I just watched Cyanide. The, the menu. No more. And that's... I'm waiting, I'm waiting. That's that, yeah, dude. I'm ready for it. I'll take a cheeseburger. So good. Um, uh... Yeah, I'm so good. I'm we gotta wait because Karen hasn't seen it and I want to see it with Okay. Her, so. Oh, you have seen it? Or it's you have a part not? of it. But I but I turned it off and I wanted to watch it with yeah, her. Dude. Um Anya Taylor Joy, fantastic. Uh homeboy that plays Beast in the new X Men movies, great. John Leguizamo, Ralph Fiennes. Rafe. Rafe? Is that how he say There's it? There's no L in his name. Whoa, is it Rafe Fiennes? <gasps> Whoa, I didn't realize that. Yeah. He was Voldemort, right? He was. He was also in the black book that Jeffrey Epstein had. Yeah. And the weird part Meaning was... Meaning that he went to the island? No. Well, m- maybe. But the weird part was his name kept coming up to the point where people were like, I think he's using Ray Fiennes as a code name. Oh. Or... Ray Fiennes was actually going to the Who, who the fuck knows? How we, there's no way to prove it, right? Nope. I mean... Yeah. That's not the weirdest thing that Jeffrey Epstein did, that's for sure. No, no. There has to be more. I couldn't I couldn't stomach the documentary that came out about him like two years ago because it was just too yeah. depressing. It's that the, yeah, that was interesting. It was an interesting one. Yeah. He's a just a weird guy. And his island, remember there was a whole big deal about his private island and shit like that? Yeah. Half those buildings have literally blown down in the wind. So now people are like What are they made of cardboard or what like what does it mean? Literally one of the buildings was made of cardboard. Like, like plywood. Like it was just a fake structure why who the fuck knows because it's temporary and he was just gonna bounce to an- this mean, is why no i i think it might have been a rape shack ah he'd even make it pretty i mean ah, but that's I don't the care. thing though is he had a really pretty house right there that he already like it's Could just have. it doesn't make sense whatever I, I don't support any of it i don't support wasting i'm glad the you space said, of a private island i'm glad you said that because <laughs> up until now i was worried that you were on jeffrey's side <laughs> i was just like how come i how yeah. come he- come on guys let's give him a chance he didn't get to go to court we don't know if he's innocent or not. The only guy in existence that was just like, Jeffrey wasn't that bad. And R. Kelly was okay, too. No. Come here, Andrew Tate. <laughs> yeah, Andrew Tate, you're, you're up next. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I don't support any of that 
discuss. I don't know. I don't want to know about the the higher elite or Pizza Gate or any gates yeah. anymore. Well, you turned off your gate radar uh, after your idol Harvey Weinstein went down, right? Yeah. Yeah. After they got Weinstein, you were like, "Well, I'm not going to look at this Ooh. shit. If they can get if they can get that saint, yeah, then I'm then I'm in hot water. I don't throwing, believe anyone. They're throwing mud at everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Who can I trust? Yeah. Not Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. Nope. I'm uh, not even. This bit's tough for me. <laughs> this bit is tough for You've me. You've gone a lot further than I thought you would. Yeah, of course you I would. I, mean, it's, it's I called, thought you would have ended a it a lot sooner. Yeah. And while we're at that, Bill Cosby had nice sweaters. Sacrifice. He was Dr. Huxtable. Uh, they actually took his doctorate away. Good, as they should. Yeah. His wife's still standing by him, though. Good, man. I, I mean, just, someone should cheer him on. Uh, wait, is she really cheering him on? Well, I'm, she, yeah, she, I mean, she doesn't believe the allegations. Oh, I thought you were saying a bit like his wife as in um, uh, Mrs. Huxtable is still, is she still? Uh, no, she no, said I'm standing pretty sure everybody him. from the Cosby show hates him. And they've hated him ever since the Cosby show, I'm sure, if they knew any of his I secrets. think technically Reverend Simone's hated him since the Cosby show. Oh, I forgot that she was just a little girl. In that. But everybody else still thought he was dad. Did you Have you seen some of the interviews of uh, Orlando, Orlando Brown? I saw one where he was saying that Raven Simone that we know her as isn't the Raven Simone he grew up with. Yeah. That and that they like, but I also have a tough time believing uh, crackhead methods who've been in prison in and out. I can't believe, yeah, and it's not right that these uh platforms are just kind of like uh capitalizing on his crackhead, me- unless he really, I mean, yeah, he's getting paid out for it, sure, hopefully, but you know where that's going, charity. I, yeah, he's the number one donor to make a wish, yeah. I was just watching um, this crazy YouTube channel that i found called the funk land and this guy talks about disneyland and theme parks and stuff like uh-huh. that does really really good videos really well put together incredible information but i just watched a, i think it was like an hour and a half long video about the the jingle the disney jingle that mm. used to go in between shows Remember okay. when you'd watch the disney channel and like uh, oh when they would like draw the exactly mickey mouse ears. do you remember that do you remember the jingle Hi, I'm Lizzie McGuire, and this is Disney Channel. I don't remember. It's close. <laughs> Horrible. It's only four notes. Uh-huh. Um, but it's... Uh, ba, 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 ba. Really? That's it? Ba, 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 ba. So what about it? What were they... So he talks about like where where that came from. Who? He, so the whole video starts, he's like, I want to... Like, someone made that song. Someone designed that song. And then, like, you remember it was in all the commercials, too, and, like, in varying different, like, keys and yeah. styles. But it all ended with... Bah, 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 and it was all, you know, it was all this whole thing. And so he starts a video off talking about, like, why do, why do channels have jingles? Well, it goes back to, like, radio stations, and it was so, um, you know... NBC in New York can send their show to Timbuktu in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. And the guy who's running that local radio station knows when shows end and to put on the next thing because they would play dun, dun, dun. The NBC had its own chime. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, you go into the future and then in TV shows, uh, specifically like when the Disney Channel was going on, there had been a law that was passed where like if you have a show for kids or a channel for children, you have to clearly delineate when it's a show and when it's a commercial because kid brains are too stupid to understand the difference of when SpongeBob's over and it's commercial for Pop Tarts. Mm-hmm. Um, so there has to be a bumper in between. We'll be right back after these messages. Remember those? Yeah. So they'd have that on all the kids' stuff. And then it became to the point where uh, when Disney That's Channel why. first started, it was a premium channel. Uh, in 88. You had to pay extra for it? In 88, they started as a premium channel, just like HBO. And the idea was, you know, we'll, uh, we don't have commercials. We're doing, they had brand new Disney content. They were, um, and this was the Disney channel. But in the, in the mid-90s, they switched to make it a free channel. But because they're Disney, we still don't, we don't show commercials. Like, we're not, we don't have to pay, they don't, we don't have to get paid by advertisers to put on these shows. We'll do it ourselves. Mm-hmm. Which was maybe the best business move that Disney ever did. Because instead of showing us commercials for Pop-Tarts and fucking Cheerios, they're showing us uh, remember movie surfers where they would talk about the next movie that was coming out yeah. and they would have one of the actors there or one of the people, one of the kids was in there. They had Disney 411 where they talk about yeah. all the cool shit. That was, Disney 365 talking about other stuff that's coming. Commercials for the for the new rides that were coming out. Like they, they really had a perfect platform to sell their own product. So why would a company that has a platform that's only selling their product need to have bumpers in between their shows to remind you that you're on Disney Channel? Because kids were too stupid to know that, like no, you said, right? because it gives them an opportunity to show three of their products in one 15-second frame. Here's one of our stars. Here's what channel you're on. Here's what show they're from. Oh, yeah, and here's our symbol. Capitalism. Boom. It's all capitalism. Boom. It's always capitalism. I thought it was an innocent thing so I could see Hillary Duff a little bit longer. So 
then he starts talking about the whole jingle and where the commercial comes from. He's able to establish what the, the, it came out in 2002. And, and like he's on YouTube and he's like, this was a recording of Disney Channel uh, in October of 2002. And they had the new logo. Like he goes through when the logos change and he's going through all this stuff. And he's able to determine that September 30th, 2002 was the first time we heard the jingle and saw the new logo. And it was because they had those express yourself uh, moments where they had Hillary Duff and you know all the actors kind of talking about things, the Tia and Tamara uh, talking and and mm-hmm. Beans. I remember when they were talking, they're like, yeah, yeah, you know, like I love my friends because they accept me for who I am and shit like that. Yeah. Um, but and the, it was a super early two thousands like camera angles where they would zoom in a little bit. Well, they originally filmed all of those on the anniversary of nine eleven. Oh. Because they had all the kids talking, like, yeah, you know, this is a big deal. You know, we got to talk about it and stuff like that. So they filmed all of these things. And then they put they put it out in September of twenty twenty of two thousand two, yeah. um, and then right after they still had all of the stock footage from all the other interviews that had nothing to do with nine eleven. So they put that into a different thing, and that's when they came up with the wand and the ears stuff. Whoa! So now he's watching some behind the scenes video of it, and you see the moment of when Hillary Duff goes, "Oh, I'm making Mickey Mouse ears," mm-hmm. and and he goes, "See, so." Not only was the logo so new that they didn't have it to show the actors when they were there, but they couldn't even describe it to the actors so that they knew what they were doing. And he goes, and then he points out like the meme that came out like five or six years ago where they would trace where their wand is. And it's, and it's really not off. at all what the what the ears are. And uh-huh. he goes, the only way they made it look like it is like through editing. And he kind of like shows like how they like cut edits to make it look like they're doing it. But the fact of the matter is, is like when Raven Simone and Lizzie McGuire uh, and... There was one other third girl who were the first three first three people to do it. They didn't know what they were doing. Also, they were at the end of a 10-hour day where they had just done interviews all day talking about everything from their friends, their family, their clothes, and 9-11. Now they're doing this bullshit thing that they don't even know what they're supposed to be drawing. Yeah. And it's like, and and they didn't even know, like, that is a huge part to all of our, like, childhood. It's like, we all know, everybody, mm. um, D23 last year had a booth set up so you could pretend to do your the Mickey your Mouse ears and, and have it, like, it has become, uh, in fact, when they got rid of it, they they brought it back recently, but they had to like change it a little bit because now we're not in six nine format in TV. We're in widescreen high definition format, so the ears in the corner don't make sense anymore. So they had to change it to the ears on the dot of the eye in Disney, and it's like and that's like again the capitalism of Disney just having the best PR people knowing what to do because it is it meant it was meant to be because well now, they make it seem like this innocent thing. Well, because they did it at first, just they did it at first because they needed bumpers in between shows. Yeah. We have shows that are 22 minutes long. We have to fill 30-minute segments. We'll we have be to know- right back. Exactly. Yeah. Then it makes a big impact on us because we saw it every single day more times than we saw the shows because it happened at the end and the beginning of the shows. Yeah. Uh, it becomes a big part of our lives. Now, all of a sudden, Disney's like, oh, fuck, is this something that people liked? Well, let's bring it back. Let's, bring let's it make now, some money. Now the people who enjoyed it as kids are having kids. Now their kids are doing it. Now we can sell it to them. It's just all, it's all coming back around. And it really, truly was... Trying to find the guy, uh, I mean, it really truly was a throwaway thing mm-hmm. that ended up being a big moment. And the whole point of the video was a guy trying to find who created that those four notes. And he find he's like doing homework on this shit to the point where he at one point in the video he's like, I couldn't figure it out. I'm done. Mm-hmm. He's like, this is the end of the video. I wish I wish this isn't how it ends, but this is how it ends. And then he's like, and, and then he gets a call from somebody, and he, he does actually find out who wrote it. Mm-hmm. And not to spoil it or anything, but it's somebody that he had guessed early on in, in the beginning. But that man had passed away uh. years ago, and he was head of this company that made jingles. And so his whole thing was like, the, and he met people who were in the company, people who worked for him, and all of them were like, you know, the whole idea of this company wasn't that uh, John makes this song. It was that Echo makes jingles for companies. We're a whole. We're not an individual. It's not that and, one guy. And so they're like, so it's going to be, re-, and even people are telling us, like, it's going to be really hard for you to find one guy. He finally narrows it down to this one guy who was uh, essentially the the like the like CEO, the lead cre- creative director of, of this company. And he goes back and tells the people who worked with him, it was so-and-so who made that jingle. And all of them are like, of course it was. He's a genius. He was like, the, he could write songs in an hour that that would go on forever like the company that he worked for did the jingle for farmers for liberty mutual for honda for Bo, like every big company for mtv every wow. big company that has a jingle and a logo this company did it for and this was the guy who was in charge of almost all of it and so he's so he after he discovers it, he's like oh it was so and so who just des- who designed those for the, the song and everybody who he talked to was like that like of course it is of course it was and his name was alex mm-hmm. like of course it was alex like he was just an absolute genius like yeah. he, he he was just one of those guys who could throw four notes out 
Yeah. And then they be and then because they just sound so well and so good together, Disney's able to use it for four the next notes. 20, 30 years. Four they're notes. using these four notes. Da, 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 da. Wow. That's insane. Yeah. Well, I'm glad they finally like found the dude. I mean, even the, like rest in peace, but like, but, but, and, but the whole thing was deal. like, you know, they didn't want people to know as opposed to like the Nickelodeon jingle that bah, 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 yeah. was written by two guys in particular. And like people know, and they gave credit to that. Yeah, those guys. But uh, since this guy worked for like some umbrella company that was and be, and because of, and like even he interviewed a couple of people who were on Disney Channel, and they're like, you know what sucks is when you make something for Disney, it's not yours anymore. Oh, it's Disney. It's Disney's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so in the beginning, it's like, yeah, that, I mean, look at this capitalistic company that has just like taken over our minds, bodies, soul, and society for the past however many decades. And we both just 40s. went to their amusement park last year. I love year. them, bro. You're sitting I in front of a lightsaber, it, bro. Just... I have a lightsaber right behind me that I paid 260 credits for. Credits. They call it credits. You're hella lame, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I hated fucking... that part. When they, yeah, when I first went to... Uh, the year prior to that, I wanted to make one and I have a reservation. I you didn't have like, enough credits. Well, it's, I had uh, I had enough credits. I guess I didn't have the reservation. No credits are no good here. No, no good here. I take no credits. No, but uh, like when they said, <laughs> they said I asked like how much is it to build a lightsaber? They said two hundred sixty credits. I said how much is that in USD? And they're like two hundred sixty dollars. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I, I. Didn't realize that the You're like, currency weird, exchange. I yeah, I didn't see a currency exchange booth on the way in. Yeah, what that's like gonna... one for one. Yeah, that's kind of a uh, that's not helpful. But... If Disney was smart, they would make us do math. No, they would make credits worth more <gasps> than the dollar. <laughs> oh shit! And, and so, sh- so when you get to Galaxy's Edge, yep. you gotta you gotta get credits. Imagine if you could actually like uh, go on like forex and start trading credits. We're about five years away from that, bro. <laughs> um, I was playing Star Wars. Fallen Order, Jedi Fallen Order, whatever. Yeah, with a homeboy from Shameless. That game should just be called Jedi Fallen. Because, because you're always falling. I'm always falling in that <laughs> game. <laughs> I'm always dying. And I'm just losing my fucking experience where I died. Yeah, gotta start all over. That's it's really tough. Bunch of spiders in this game. Yep, bunch of spiders. Don't a remember bunch. any spiders in the Star Wars movies. No, but they threw it in. They Everywhere. They threw it in. And I'm sorry that you're so going to that. So I've turned off the game. I will not return to it until Halloween. Went back to Assassin's Creed Origins, where uh-huh. they're scarabs, not spiders. Those are scarier. No. Scarabs are weird. Scarabs are beetles. I've seen the mummy. I like beetles. They're beetles with spider legs. Aren't all beetles? No. Stop it. You're ruining beetles. <laughs> Let's do an improv scene. Whew. All right, ladies and gentlemen, highly irrelevant. All right, and next up for the Disney Jingle Audition, we have Alejandro Middleton. So, Alejandro, if you could just stand on your mark. Uh, put your headshot and resume right there. Okay. All right, and your measurements? Uh, your measurements. Yeah. I, I'm, I have... Um. Three inches, six. What is the inches referring to? Um, I'm, um, I'm taller than six feet. By oh, you're saying inches. six feet three inches. Three inches, six feet. Six feet three inches. Three inches, six feet. I'm sorry if it's the okay. That's that's completely fine. It says um before we get on with the 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 rest of your audition. It uh, says here. Oh under your special skills that you are really fast at solving Rubik's cubes. Um I I uh, I I have been fast in the past. Um so your speed is not consistent. No it is with the uh the Rubik's cube it is. I but I didn't uh I didn't bring one with me. And you know what it's completely irrelevant. Don't even worry about it. I might it. uh there's um uh, uh, we have a whole bunch of kids waiting. I thought outside. maybe I had one in the car. Uh, let's just get past the whole Rubik's. It's completely fine. It's it's fine. We just need you to to get okay to do to to draw some Mickey Mouse ears in the corner of the screen, or yeah. act like you're gonna do it, and we'll bet be- we'll edit it in post. Say hi, my name is Alejandro Middleton, okay. and you're watching Disney Channel. Okay. And then after you draw the ears, you point real cute to the camera. And you wink. Okay. All right. Um, hi, I'm Alejandro Middleton, and you're watching Disney Channel, and then you point to the camera really cute, and then you wink. 
I don't know if that fear actually trying right there, if you're just trying to reiterate what we just told you. No, I'm doing what you told me. Let's let's hear it again. Okay. And then I point at the camera and wink really cute. You don't have to say what, what you're doing. That's completely fine. No, you just you just you point to the camera and you do it. And also, I don't know. Try drawing the ears again. Okay. Those are two circles with dots in the middle. Are you drawing eyes? Are those eyes? I, I, those are uh, the uh, boobs. You pointed at your eyes and you said, "I'm." I don't know why I'm giving you this much time. Let's try one more time. We are Disney, and we like to give our kids here multiple chances. Okay, we are Disney, and we like to give our kids multiple chances. Okay, you don't have to just repeat exactly what I'm saying. Well, I this thought is just like, it's just like cut to uh, the car ride home with him and his mom. So, hon, how did it go? I, you know, it, 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 it was good. Just good. That's all you have to say. I just, I thought it went really well, Mom, but on the way out, I th thought I saw Shia LaBeouf in the room. Cut to that moment. All right, Alejandro Middleton, thank you very much for your time, and we'll see you later. Thanks. Hey, man. What? Cut back. Are you sure it was him? I think so. Cut back. All right, cut back to the car. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was him. Did you talk to him? I, he didn't say much. He said, hey, guy. Hmm. Okay, well that's fine. Um, what's what's your next audition that we're going to? It doesn't say the name of the project. It just says show up at Harvey Weinstein's office at eight. Oh, I love, I love his movies. What a good year we live in. Mom, right? can you name a single movie that he's involved in? Two thousand three. I'm pretty sure he did definitely maybe with Ryan Reynolds, and I think definitely maybe with with Ryan Reynolds Who's that not? might be a Weinstein <laughs> produced was... movie. Also, the new Transformers movie that Shia LaBeouf is going to be in. Then scene. And scene. Okay. Uh, oh, God. That kid got no job and he's now homeless in Oakland. That kid is Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> oh, that kid was Shia LaBeouf and no. saw Shia LaBeouf in no, the No, that kid was the one who didn't get the role for Even Stevens. And he oh. is living under a bridge down by the river I'm in a van. I'm sorry. That sucks. It's a Chris Farley reference. Down by the and then yes! jumps straight. Of course, yeah, no, that one. I'm so happy you got that. And just throws himself on a glass table that seems really dangerous. I just wish I could have seen a Harvey Weinstein biopic, but Chris Farley played him. <sighs> <sighs> you, there's not a little <sighs> bit of you that would like that would like to see that. No, there's so many scenes that I don't want to watch in that. There's a little, there's a little bit of no, me. No, that's probably. I'm okay. If you want this role, <laughs> no, you gotta meet me. You're gonna have to come down. <laughs> no, 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 no. Would not want to see that. These role. are also spot on Chris Farley impressions. Pretty so good. For those of us who've never seen Chris Farley before, you don't need to see it. Well, 50% of that impression is doing the body gesture where he's, I don't know what he's doing. He's the, he's the, he's talking to the kids on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, no, I don't know why You're he's going to be homeless. Living down by the river in a van. I want to watch that after we record. I'm, I mean, we're right about there, buddy. All right, dude. Well, let's get out of here. Um, and uh, let's tell the listeners next week what movie we're reviewing. It's a big one. Schindler's Rush List. Hour. Stop. It's Rush Hour, guys. And I'm actually getting... A, oh, wait. I'm getting a phone call right now, so we got to call it. Yeah, let's go. But, um, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, guys... Baddies, we love you so much. Did you forget what we call them? <laughs> baddies, no, I just I just know that they are ladies and gentlemen and, and everything in between. Um, tell them where they can find us. Oh, God. Let's see. Your address is 432 yeah. Hemingway Drive. Yeah. Uh, and my address is 298 Salvador Dali. And that's where you can find us. Salvador Dali. <laughs> yeah. Um, he yeah. lived on the street. That's why they <laughs> named it after him. Oh, okay. That's exactly why. Uh, but if that's too difficult for you, you can follow Christian at Christian has asthma. Follow Alejandro at call underscore me Jesus. Follow the podcast at ICBTB podcast. And check out our website at ICBTB.com. And you have to put the WWW in. Otherwise, um, it's not going to work. It will, but it's more fun if you do. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah. We just want you to do more work guys. But other than that, we'll see you next week. Take it AC. 
uh, contact us. And uh, yeah, any last words, my friend? None that I want on air. All right. It can't be that bad, though.